Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here, as always, with Tom Or Tom, how's it going? Tony, there's no time for feelings. There's no time for emotions. Tony, it's a breaking news podcast. Tony, we have breaking news. Boop, 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 boop. That was my breaking news music. Oh, okay. I thought you were uh, beatboxing. No? Poorly, yes. So, yes, uh, Tom, breaking news. Ohio State has landed a commitment from 2024 quarterback Dylan Rayola of the Nebraska Rayolas and is the uh, the number one quarterback in the 2024 class, depending on uh, which which uh, website you look at, the number one overall player in the class, 6'3", 210 pounds, uh, as, as a sophomore last year, and it's you know 2024 again, so last year was a sophomore year, completed about two-thirds of his passes for 3,243 yards, 42 touchdowns, is a pretty athletic guy as well, can run around and like um, make time, basically, and uh, will draw some comparisons to Patrick Mahomes if that does anything for anybody. Uh, so yes, Tom, a pretty good breaking news for the Buckeyes as they now have a commitment in the 2024 class. So all of the 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 worry about Ohio State not not getting anybody in the 24 2024 class, they now do have somebody. So they will have at least one signee in that class. That's that's good. Um, you know, I think the big concern now is yes, you have the guy rated as literally the best player in the entire class by two four seven. Tony, is Ohio State too? Is it, is there too much elitism in the Ohio State program where they're not willing to just take guys ranked below number one with this one man number one overall class? Is that is that a concern at all to you? It's a concern in that it limits the players that you can target. If you're only going after the number ones, sometimes, you know what, those number twos, they're no slouches. If you want to go after the number two player in a position or in the nation, try that. You know, um, what 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 would Mark Grace used to call it? A slump buster, that sort of thing. You know, the dregs of society, the number two players in a position, try those out as well. And who knows what you'll find. I'm not saying they're going to be great, but you know what? Expand your horizons. This is college after all. This is for experimentation. Am I right? I, I think I'm just going to completely change the subject because I don't think there's anything I can say that would not get me in a tremendous amount of trouble. So, Tony, I think what's interesting to me about this is at this point, I think Ryan Day in quarterbacks, and you can lump in Corey Dennis in quarterbacks there if you want to, is, but I think that group, the Ohio State quarterback recruiting, is basically, to me, essentially where the Ohio State wide receiver recruiting is, where I don't know if you are... If you ever listen to Effectively Wild, the baseball podcast, but they're one of the former hosts there, Sam Miller, who wrote for ESPN for a long time, just like a really good, funny, quirky baseball writer, had a great tweet, like, I mean, 10 years ago at this point, but he uh, the tweet was, I love this trade for the Rays. Who did they give up and who did they get? Where, you know, the, the joke is basically like the Rays are really smart. So whatever they do is going to work out fine. Like you almost don't need to know. What happens? It's just like they're going to win this trade because they're really smart and they they just do things better than everyone else. That's kind of how Ohio State wide receiver and quarterback recruiting is right now to me. It's like Brian Hartline receives commitment from wide receiver. I don't have to watch a second of huddle film to go, yeah, this guy's probably pretty darn good and uh, probably going to get developed pretty darn well and turn into a pretty darn good wide receiver at the college level. And more often than not, you're going to be bright, even if you do that as like a blind uh, blind uh, test of. Uh, you know, a blind evaluation of of uh, whoever this whoever he signs. Quarterbacks is kind of turning out the same way. I mean, you you dug up a great stat on the number of five star quarterbacks that Ryan Day has uh, has signed since taking over as head coach. Tony, he didn't take over as head coach very long ago. So, um, how many how many five star quarterbacks has he landed since taking over as head coach? Yeah, so he took over in January of 2019, and since then, assuming that Dylan Real actually signs, he will have signed six six five-star quarterbacks. And what that equates to is a five-star quarterback committing to Ryan Day about every seven months. And that is about as incredible as you can imagine. It started with Justin Fields, who committed via the transfer portal. Then it was Kyle McCord. Then CJ Stroud. Then uh, Quinn Ewers. Yes, but he, he still did it. 
And then it was Devin Brown, and now it's Dylan Rayola. Six guys, six five-star quarterbacks, and it's one of those things where, no, not everybody can play, and we've seen the what happens when not everybody can play, and that's why that's why you go get somebody every year. And I think it was last year, you're talking about the receivers, last year in the spring, every receiver on every scholarship receiver on the roster was a top 100 receiver, and it was like, you know, Brian Hartline had created all of this. Zach Smith was involved in, in you know, the early stuff with Chris Olave. Although Chris Olave, no, it was everybody but Chris Olave was a top 100 receiver. And Chris Olave, again, sometimes you, you, you dig at the bottom of the barrel and look what you find. But with these quarterbacks, it is pretty spectacular. And Tom, one of the crazy things is uh, they don't have anybody for 2023 yet. So this... This may grow. I don't expect a five-star quarterback out of 2023, but at this point, to expect anything other than a five-star quarterback, that would be the foolish thing. Yeah, and I think there's sort of a question. I mean, there was the idea floated uh, when you know Rayola was sort of talked about as potentially someone who was coming soon as a commitment. That you know the idea was floated that well this it was going to scare off all the good quarterbacks in 2023. I had Bill Green on the morning scoop a couple weeks ago talking about this stuff, and he said like that's not how kids look at it. Like you're not necessarily you know if you're a 2023 five star quarterback, part of the mentality of being a five star quarterback is you are absolutely sure you are the single best man for the job in the entire world, and so you're not going to be scared of a guy that's coming a year behind you who you know you're in the system. You know, you, you, you know, what you know, you know what you are. You believe in yourself. You're in the system for a year before this other guy shows up. So that's not necessarily going to scare you off. I, I don't know that they're necessary. I mean, I, I wouldn't say they're not going to get a tw- five-star quarterback for 2023, but I think, you know, the idea that they're not going to be able to get anyone, that they're going to have to take the, uh, you know, the low three-star quarterback from Ohio who just wants to, you know, wants a chance to be a Buckeye. I don't think you're looking at that either. You know, maybe they do that in terms of depth play or something at some point, but I don't think that's the only guy you're signing in 23 because, you know, you've got at this point, I think the prototype, the four, you know, the, the formula is there for these guys where if you come in, even if you transfer somewhere else, like you're still going somewhere else. That's good. You're not going to, uh, you know, McNeese state or Idaho state or something. Jack Miller left. And is now competing for the starting job at Florida. Quinn Ewers left and is now competing for the starting job at Texas. It's like, you know, if you if you come and learn under Ryan Day for a little while, you're not, you know, you're not leaving in worse shape than you were when you started. So you come, you compete for the job at Ohio State. If you win it, great. You go, you know, win Big Ten championships and uh, go get drafted in the first round. And if you don't, then you go somewhere else and go be a quarterback somewhere else in the power five that doesn't, you know, constantly stack five-star quarterback recruits like Ohio state does. I, I don't expect them to land a five-star guy because, you know, it's, there are only so many, and a lot of these guys are already involved with other schools. And then uh, we, we don't even need to get into the collective aspect of what may be happening, but also keep in mind, the years that they they got C.J. Stroud and Devin Brown, those guys weren't in the picture at this point. In this point of 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 recruiting, yeah, there was communication, but like they weren't the the top targets at that point. I mean, they already had a commitment from Jack Miller the year they went and got C.J. Stroud, and they had a commitment from Quinn Ewers when they had to go get Devin Brown, and so there's still some things that'll come into play. One of the interesting recruiting pitches is that hey, we need a new starting quarterback next year. Like C.J. Stroud is probably, by the way, probably going to be a top five pick. That's what happens when you come to Ohio State. You're a first-round NFL draft pick as a quarterback. You know, that's that's a recruiting pitch. There's a job opening. Now, is that a realistic thing? No. But can you – Does it? Is it lying to say that we have a job opening? No. And uh, that, that can be something that, you know – and really – Nobody wants to wait a long time, but the way things are stacked right now, like you may only have to, assuming a a freshman quarterback, say they get somebody in 2023, how long is he sitting before he is viably competing for the job? Because if, if it's, you know, like if Kyle McCord wins the job next year, like he could go then to the NFL, like you could have a guy who comes in in 2023 and then is competing in 2024 
to be the the starting quarterback. And then you look at where does this all come into play for Dylan Rayola? And I'm wondering, when do we actually see him competing for the job? Is this is 2025, 2026, or is it a situation where it's wide open in 2024 again, and then, then you're back to um, can a freshman, true freshman win it? I don't think they can, but I still think, I also think a true freshman can look pretty darn good in Ryan Day's offense. Right. And I think, I think it's a system where you see there's a learning curve. I mean, I think you saw Devin Brown in the spring game. You know, you, you saw some athleticism, you saw him making some plays, you saw some some mistakes, and he didn't look great at all times. That was kind of what Kyle McCord looked like last year. Well, this year, Kyle McCord looked a lot better. And, you know, that's kind of how it's sort of been with these young quarterbacks at Ohio State. And that's really true everywhere. Like, you, you show me a true freshman quarterback who comes in and just lights up your spring game the first spring they're on campus, and I will show you a team with a very, 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 very bad defense. I just, you, that's not a reasonable expectation. You don't see very many true freshmen just walk on campus and immediately start, especially when you have proven veterans ahead of them. That just doesn't really happen. You can have a role maybe that freshman year. Um, you know, I go back to like the Tim Tebow, Chris Leak, uh, Florida team. Like you can have a role, you can have packages, but you're not going to, you're not necessarily going to just walk on campus and be a starter. But at this point, you kind of have that formula where, okay, let's say CJ Stroud leaves this year, you know, and goes, go, turns pro next spring. Next spring, it's a battle between Kyle McCord and Devin Brown, and then whoever the 2023 guys is, but, you know, really, it's probably between Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. And then if Kyle McCord wins that, then, you know, you see if Devin Brown sticks around. If Devin Brown wins that, then you would think maybe, you know, if you're an older quarterback, that the a lot of those guys have transferred, not all, but, you know, maybe that quarterback battle drags on into the fall a little bit, and then they both stay. But then, you know, if it's if it's Kyle McCord who wins that job next year, Okay, then he the, the the model has been after three years, boom, you're off to the NFL. The next spring, you know, the second spring for the 2023 guy, he and Devin Brown are fighting it out for the starting job, and Dylan Rayola's there, but he's probably, you know, probably waiting another year. And then if Devin Brown wins that job, then guess what? The model is boom. After that year, Devin Brown leaves, and the 2023 guy and 20 and uh, Dylan Rayola are fighting it out for the starting job in 2025, and just it just. It's just kind of like an assembly line at this point, and that can't possibly go on forever, can it? I mean, it seems like at some point you have to, you know, this is this is like the uh, the people on Twitter were like, this dude doesn't miss. Like that's kind of Ryan Dane recruiting it right now. Like this dude just doesn't miss. He he just just kind of like every year there's a new five star, and you've got three to four guys competing for the job, and you know, you know, if this guy's off to the NFL after three years because he has all the measurables and, you know, time in Ryan Day's system and has, you know, learned and put up big numbers like, okay, that all sets you up to be in the NFL, in the NFL after three years. And then just like next man up, it, it's crazy. And it can't possibly go on forever, can it? But I mean, like, as long as it's going on, it's, it's like almost the surest thing you can, you can, uh, you can have, cause it's just like, you have th- three potential five-star, like, top five overall kind of players in their classes, like, they're not all going to bust. Like, Ryan Day has shown that he can develop these guys well enough that someone is going to, you're going to have a good quarterback or two or three on your team every year, which is just, when you look back at Ohio State quarterback uh, play uh, 1890 through uh, 2000 and, uh, what, 16, like, it is it is very much uh, one thing with a couple very rare exceptions, and then Ryan Day shows up, and all of a sudden it is like the complete opposite of that. One of the not one of the reasons that he brought in that he brought in Ryan Day, but Urban Meyer, maybe one of the reasons, also talked about wanting to. Uh, actually, he didn't talk about it, but I talked about it. I forget sometimes I confuse the two of us, but like you know. The lack of first round NFL draft picks at quarterback, like every other position at Ohio State, you have that. And there hadn't been a first round NFL draft pick at quarterback since Art Schleister in what, 1981 or whatever. And Ryan, 83 and 82. And then Ryan Day came in and was like, yeah, we want to change that. We want to be a quarterback you type of place. And you've seen it happen. Now, can it, can it go on forever? No. However, Tom, like, and again, these ratings are, these rankings, you go too far out and then they mean nothing. But 
You look at a guy like 2025 quarterback Ryan Montgomery, one of the top 2025 quarterbacks in the nation at, at this point. He's from Finley, and he's going to be the brother of uh, Luke Mon- He is the brother. He's not going to be the brother. He is the brother of Luke Montgomery, who is going to be um, signing with Ohio State this year. So, like, there is potential for this to go on for a while. And then uh, if they miss on somebody, and now they've missed on a couple of guys, there's going to be no shortage of quarterbacks wanting to transfer in, like established quarterbacks wanting to transfer in. And even if you need to do the the Lincoln Riley thing for a while, where you can't sign your own quarterbacks because for for whatever reason, so you just bring in other places quarterbacks. And I think it's a little ironic that he's doing the same thing at USC. I don't care if he actually signed the quarterback that he got at Oklahoma, like Caleb Williams. Yes, he signed him at Oklahoma, but you know. He has to rely on another transfer quarterback at USC, and we'll see if he can, um, you know, if they start signing guys or just buy them out of the transfer portal, but or or, or with their uh, out of high school. But like, there are two different avenues that Ryan Day can go to to get successful quarterbacks, and both have worked for him now with Justin Fields and CJ Stroud. I think they want to continue to do the high school route more than the transfer portal because you have them for longer and you can. You can really get into uh, all of the teachings with them, and you don't have to necessarily, okay, we get one spring with you, and you have to be our starter like they did with Justin Fields. That worked out. Not everybody is Justin Fields. C.J. Stroud wasn't Justin Fields, you know, and Kyle McCord won't be. So you get them in high school. You you bring them along. They learn it from beginning to end, and then you can do something with them. And, you know, this Dylan Riola, uh, he, he's a solid – I said six three two ten earlier. That was like um, huddle. Like when you watch him play, he's listed at six three two twenty five on twenty twenty four seven. He looks like he's he's two hundred twenty five pounds. He's built like a guy who can take some shots and doesn't mind running the ball here and there. But is a, is a playmaker and you know has all kinds of different arm angles and is um, he, he comes from a sports family, which sometimes is a concerning thing. Other times, it's a thing where this is what he wants to do professionally. And so he's already a professional. And that's exactly the kind of guy that can really blossom at Ohio State under Ryan Day. Yeah, someone who comes in and, you know, he's from the South. So he's had the seven on seven experience. You can, you know, it's a little bit more of a year round sport down there. So you generally, you come in a little more polished. And it, as the son of an NFL player, you, you know, you're not necessarily the coach's kid, but you're sort of in that coach's kid kind of, uh, mold where you come in a little bit more polished and a little bit more, more ready to go immediately. And I mean, you mentioned, you know, 6'3", 225. I went back and looked up Dwayne Haskins. When Dwayne Haskins was a starter quarterback at Ohio State, he was listed at 6'3", 220. So Dylan Rayola, as a sophomore in high school, going into his junior year of high school, already same height, five pounds heavier. And, you know, I mean, that's that's a big dude. And he moves. I mean, you, he's not, you know, he is not going to make anyone forget uh, Braxton Miller at Ohio State in terms of mobility, but he's, he's agile enough in the pocket. There's, you know, you look at his, uh, you look at his huddle film and, uh, boy, if you like watching a quarterback throw deep, Oh buddy, do I have the uh, huddle film for you? Like, I don't, I, there, I think I had to go, uh, three or four minutes in before I th- saw any throws that were not, you know, 40 plus yards down the field. But you also see a couple times where, you know, the rush is getting to him. Okay. You know, he's, he's agile enough to get around the rush keep his eyes downfield and make a play downfield. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big, uh, you know, that, that's a pretty big piece of uh, being, being able to be an effective quarterback is you don't need everything to be perfect all the time and you can still make plays happen. So yeah, I th- it feels like someone who is going to be, again, I don't think it's fair to expect uh, him to be on the, uh, you know, to, for him to be competing for the starting job his freshman year, but he very much looks like someone who can be on the field his freshman year where you're not going to get talked about, uh, you know, the way that, that Ryan Day was talking about Quinn Ewers last year was like, well, you know, he's, you know, basic, basically we, we, we can't trust him to do anything yet because, you know, he came in so late in the year. Rayola, you, you assume, comes in in the spring, goes through the whole spring practice, has all that time, and then is set up to really be uh, long-term successful at Ohio State and, and, you know, have an opportunity to really contribute, can, you know, contribute in some way early and potentially start, you know, year, year two, if, if that's, uh, how the, how the quarterback depth chart works out. And boy, it is, uh, 
it is a challenge to try and project what that might look like, uh, <laughs> what that might look like that, uh, that far out at this point, because there's a lot of moving parts. But, you know, I mean, if you keep stacking the number one quarterback in the class or the number two quarterback in the class every year, I think eventually good things are probably going to happen. That's, that's my hot take on the matter. Oh, wow. Oh, let me write this down. Hold on. Uh, save this for the bold predictions, Tom. When you do try to project, it becomes this thing where, so you Richard as a true freshman, you watch as a Richard freshman, then you have your blow up season as a Richard sophomore, and then you go pro. And we could see that with CJ Stroud. And then what? Kyle McCord was a true freshman last year. He did not Richard, but you know, he could have, but they didn't. And so then you watch as a second year guy, then the third year guy, third year, you blow up and you go pro. And this, I mean, we're already talking about, you know, Devin Brown could be the starter in 2024 or, or watching in 2024. And as, as Dylan Riola is, is redshirting and then he watches Devin Brown be the starter for a season and, and then he goes or whatever. And it, there's, as you said, it's this assembly line, and uh, there's there's a, a twenty twenty three year missing there that will eventually get involved, but it, it becomes this uh, you know the whole uh, testimony versus theory, and right now there is so much testimony going on with the quarterbacks that uh, you know didn't didn't take much preaching for for Dylan Rayola. We know he was he's been on campus what twice in the spring, was uh, obviously at the the spring game getting the the first class treatment from everybody there and why wouldn't you and now you get the quarterback in and now he he he, okay now go get us the rest of the class like we will help you dylan but also you got to get on the phones get on you know all of the the dms and the texts and uh, the the apple things uh whatever those are tom with the with the i message or who knows what nobody cares but like that's where you start building that class Kyle McCord did it and that's what you if you can have that Coaches really like that because then that leadership builds right away and it just goes from there. Yeah, that that's where a lot of classes start. And, you know, I mean, generally coaches like to have that quarterback piece in place because, number one, that's a very important position on the field. But number two, that is kind of a you're sort of a natural leader at that position. And, you know, he has I mean, he's from Arizona, from Chandler, Arizona is where he's going to high school this fall. But he actually has a, uh, some ties with the guys from South Florida Express, which is, is the seven on seven team we talk about a lot. They, you know, they he was uh, visiting Ohio State at the same time as them. I think some some friendships were formed there with between those guys and uh, Bill Green. He was super super tied into that uh, that seven on seven team, South Florida Express. Made it sound like those guys are playing a tournament at some point in Arizona, and you know they you may need a quarterback. So it's like yeah, sure, I'll, I'll play with you guys in in. Uh, it, when you guys are out here for seven on seven out for tournaments in Arizona and you know there are so much talent on that that South Florida Express team I mean we've talked about uh you know Brandon Innes and Cormani McLean and a lot you know a lot of those guys Carnell Tate I think is on that team but the, you know there is um there's so much talent there that okay now if you're the quarterback and you are friends with all these guys it's just one more thing I mean a lot of those South Florida Express guys have been linked to Ohio State already but, you know, if you, if now the quarterback who you guys are kind of friends with is also the quarterback at Ohio State, it's like, well, that's just one more thing. It's not necessarily the decisive thing, but it's just like one more thing to throw, one more chip to throw on the uh, Ohio State pile in terms of uh, making that decision. So, you know, it, you, you don't necessarily think of Arizona as being a real hotbed for Ohio State recruiting. They can we'll kind of get like a guy or two from there most years. But, you know, being out there. You're going to be you're going to be traveling in a lot of those all star circuits and all that kind of stuff, all those, you know, elite 11 camps, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, if you can if you can kind of be carrying the Ohio State flag in all those places, all of that stuff, it's just, you know, again, this is not going to like make someone's decision, but it's just like one more thing in Ohio State's favor. You know, when they've already, they already uh, you know, as we as we have sort of talked about off the top of the show, they already have some stuff going in their favor. Uh, in terms of recruiting right now, so not 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 a bad thing. Yeah, and recruiting is just a bunch of one more things that you know we we have this and we have this and we have this, and eventually the the straw will break the camel's back somewhere once you have enough uh, one more things there. Tom, anything else before we go? I think we covered it 
Ohio State getting a commitment from Dylan Riola, the number one quarterback in the 2024 class, number one player in the class, depending on your ranking system. A great start to the class, uh, about as ideal as you could hope for. Anything else, Tom? No, that's it. I mean, and and uh, you know, just to just to kind of wrap up the thought from before, like what do we always talk about in terms of recruiting? What's the, what are the two most important thing? Comfort and relationships. Well, if you're if you're comfortable on campus and you you know you're friends with uh, some of these guys. That just, you know, a lot of times we talk about it in terms of coaching staff, but in terms of players, just one more thing. So, no, that's it. We're all We're good. Sounds good. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, congrats on your new quarterback, everybody. That will do it for us here, and we will talk to you guys later.